why is it so hot? Y'all better be watching this video because it is hot. I can't put on my fan because you're gonna hear it in the background. I can't put on the AC because I have to open the windows. Y'all better be thankful for this, okay? As you can see by the title, we're going to be talking about things you should know before you go natural. I, don't get me wrong, I am not a natural hair guru or expert or none of that. I just know what I know from my personal experience and things that I thought everybody should know. So, don't want to do too much talking, let's get into the video. So firstly, I want to get into what is being natural or going natural. In simple terms, it just means that you are reverting your hair to the state that it grows out of your scalp. Meaning, you're not putting any chemicals on it while you're growing it out. It's just how it, basically how you were born with it. Personally, people have like varying opinions on how they think natural hair, like the full definition of it is, meaning that a like, color treated hair is not natural. I think it's still natural. It's hair growing out of your head, you just color treated it as well. But like, Fully natural is not relaxed or text laxed or that kind of hair. That's not natural. That is processed hair. Tip number one, products do not grow your hair. Let me tell you that. A good, what, like curling cream and all of that, you don't need the most expensive products, one, and those products don't even grow your hair. Your hair always grows, that's the thing. Oils will help your hair to grow faster or like prevent some breakage on your ends because your hair always grows as I said you just need to learn how to retain the length meaning your hair is not breaking off as soon as it grows so let's say you grow one inch and you break off one inch in that same month it's gonna look like your hair is not growing but it is you're just not retaining your lengths so a tip for that is find some oils that work for you personally I like my own mixture of oils castor oil olive oil um argan oil People use grapeseed oil, a whole other, a bunch of different oils. There are a lot of oils out there. Look at what oils work for you. You're gonna have to go through trial and error for this because I can't tell you what's good for your hair. Another beauty guru cannot tell you what's good for your hair. You could just know what's good for your hair by trial and error and testing it out. Stop it. Get some help. Tip number two. Do not compare your growth no curl pattern to other people. Your growth and your curl pattern are simply, as I'm saying, they're yours. You can't go looking at someone else's and compare yours to that when they are totally different person, they are not you. Your curl pattern is unique to you. Your curl pattern might not be the same as mine. We might have type 4 hair, 4C hair, but your curl pattern might not be the same as mine, meaning my, my hair in the front, looser, you know? looser curl pattern in the back tighter curls yours might be tight in the front looser in the back or tight overall or loose overall but you might still have 4c hair our curl patterns differ with every different person so you can't go comparing yours to the other beauty group you see and be like hmm why is my hair not looking like that am i doing something wrong no it's your curl pattern also your hair might not grow as fast as someone else's and i say grow in quotation marks I say grow in quotation marks because everyone's hair grows. I think we grow like 1 to 1.5 inch. Zero, it's either 0 0.5 to 1 or 1 to 1.5 inches. I'll put the correct one on the screen. Per month, they just might be using different practices to retain their length, as I said from the previous tip. You just need to learn how to retain your length. Even if your hair does not look like it's growing, as fast and you might have like just genetically shorter hair that's fine your natural hair journey is yours hair growth time and hair length do not determine the health of your hair tip number three heat is not have you seen me playing with this stop tip number three heat is not the enemy all the time now some people might tell you, oh, don't use heat, you could damage your hair. While that is true, it's not the enemy all the time. Using it 
in excessive amounts overusing and abusing the heat is going to damage your hair you're just gonna damage your curl pattern and you will not be able to see like how your hair actually is and how it reacts to different products because your curl pattern will just be all off all the way off the rack your hair will be looking like if it's going through a lot and that's just not cute but coming back to my point heat can be beneficial like if you're using it for deep conditioning people use it like if you see these salons they have like the hood i'll put a picture of the thing over here oh here somewhere 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 like they use it in the hair when they deep conditioning that because it helps the moisture from the deep conditioner seep through your hair strands a little bit more a, a little bit better therefore helping your moisture stay in your hair and getting your hair feeling softer so using heat in that capacity and not overusing it it could actually be helpful to your hair tip number four it is completely okay to make mistakes as I mentioned earlier, this is a trial and error experience. You're not gonna know what you want to do or how your hair reacts until you go through and try different things on your hair. You know, that's like, Ryan hmm. Little. <laughs> that's like you eating chocolate cake for the first time. And you hear everybody ranting and raving about how good chocolate cake is and you decide to try it for yourself and you realize you absolutely hate chocolate cake how would you have known if you like chocolate cake if you didn't try it you understand because everybody's just saying it's good everybody's saying this hair product is good just because everybody's saying this hair product is good does not mean you yourself will like it you have to go through test things for yourself it might be a little expensive not gonna lie i try to go for budget friendly things and they actually work for my hair this is your personalized learning experience and like any other journey, there will be bumps along the road. You will find products that work, you will find products that don't work. You will spend your money on products that don't work and waste your coins, but you will spend your money on products that do work and in the long run, you will know what works for your hair through your mistakes. You only learn from mistakes. So get to making your mistakes, girl. Tip number five, take your time. Tip number five, take time to learn about hair porosity, what is your hair porosity and what it actually means. So in a nutshell, hair porosity means how fast your hair can absorb water, aka moisture. Low porosity means your hair does not absorb moisture very well and this is a little plug in here. I wanted to do a video on hair porosity test. I'm pretty sure I'm low porosity because products usually sit on my hair unless I move them in. But if you all want to see that video, give me a thumbs up and a comment in the comment section below and tell me you want to see it, girl. Low porosity means your hair does not absorb water very well, whereas high porosity means your hair absorbs water very well, very quickly. Knowing your hair porosity will help you navigate which products actually moisturize your hair, how much you have to work a product in, and you will know which products don't actually work for your hair porosity type. My sixth point, moisture is your best friend let me say it again for those in the back moisture is your best friend Period. moisturizing products help prevent your hair from breaking off because with natural hair your hair can get a little dry because with straighter hair the reason why people with straighter hair they wash their hair so often is because it gets so oily and that's because the oils from their scalp can go down their hair strands much quicker because it's a straight hair strand we have kinks and coils so it will take much longer for the hair to for the oil to go down the strand therefore your hair can be prone to breakage if it is dry therefore moisturizing products are a great investment once you find a great moisturizer for your hair you don't really need to spend your much money much money on like a curling cream there's not any other you know you just need one good moisturizer personally i use the cream of nature curl activator cream moisturizer that really moisturizes my hair and it also activates my curls i like that one i used to use Cantu. it smells really good by the way i just find it just didn't moisturize my hair as long as the cream of nature actually does like my hair will still moisturize for at least three days with the cream of nature by keeping your hair moisturized, you prevent breakage, as I said before, and that helps you with retaining your length because less hair breaking off means your hair is flourishing, retaining your length. 
Now, y'all need to know an oil is not a moisturizer. Oils are grease, they're not moisturizers. They are sealants. They seal the moisture into your hair strands. So you need to find moisturizing methods that work for you. For instance, the lock method, which is liquid, oil, and cream. That might work for you in helping to keep the moisture in your strands. So it means that you have to use like a, a liquid, like water or something, your oil, and then a cream moisturizer on top for moisture. Last tip, silk and satin are very important, okay? They are very important. Now, I have noticed a difference when I would sleep with cotton head tights or just sleep with my hair on my regular, on my regular pillowcase, I noticed a difference. My hair is actually drier when I wake up in the morning. That's because materials like cotton absorb moisture out of your hair so you're like okay you go to bed huh my hair's moisturized oh i'm set for the day you sleep on your cotton pillowcase and you're like you get up in the morning like desert what is that no so you need to use silk or satin head ties bonnets pillowcases whatever it is that way you are not drying out your hair you're keeping any moisture preventing breakage and thus achieving your goal of length retention duh tip number eight learn some protective hairstyles less manipulation that you do in your hair will help to achieve your hair growth and length retention which is basically the goal because the less you manipulate your hair the less you're playing with your hair putting your hands in your hair it's going to prevent breakage because the more we lose hair strands every day the more you manipulate it and change up your hairstyles the more you cause breakage and more hair strands can be lost also braids as i said in my natural hair growth journey which will show up here in the eye cards it is a good way to retain your hair for low min to retain your hair's length for low manipulation and it is a protective hairstyle when i do braids i don't really manipulate my edges that much so I let my edges like breathe for a little while because like when I have my hair like this, I like my edges to be done. I just don't like my hairstyles without my edges done. Personal opinion, you don't have to do your edges all the time. So when I have braids in, it's a good way for my hair to actually be left alone. It's just in the braids, it's just there. Good hairstyles are like twists, mini twists, mini braids in your hair with your own hair, no extensions, buns, goddess braids, hairstyles like this, little puff, any little hairstyle where you don't have to like manipulate your hair so often those are great and they're going to help you with your hair growth so guys we have come to the end of this video if you liked my tips and found they were helpful please give this video a like comment down below what else you want to see subscribe to my channel come back for more videos and i'll see you guys in my next one bye